What is the date of first delinquency? Hi, this is consumer protection attorney Bill Clanton, and I've helped hundreds of consumers deal with inaccurate credit reporting, debt collection harassment, and other consumer-related matters. In this video, I'll be answering the question, what is the date of first delinquency? The date of first delinquency is the date that somebody first falls behind on payments, and this date is very important because it ensures compliance with the Fair Credit Reporting Act. That means that an error in this date can give rise to a lawsuit under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. It's a violation of the law. Now, in order to bring a lawsuit, you'll have to first dispute the inaccurate information. And I've got videos about that. Um, it's a whole process in and of itself. But date of first delinquency is important because it ensures a number of things. How is the date of first delinquency calculated or figured out? Well, the date of first delinquency is not the charge-off date. It's not the date that the credit card company says that they are charging off the debt and selling it to uh, a third-party debt collection agency or sending it to lawyers for collections. The date of first delinquency is well before that. Um, the date of first delinquency is the date that a consumer first falls behind in their payments. So, for example, if your minimum payment is $500 and you pay $400 or $450, then you're first delinquent on that date. Let's say that's January. Now, if you continue to make payments to the credit card company and they continue to accept them, then they may not put your account out for charge-off or start the charge-off process. So if you pay close to what's what the minimum payment is in February and March, they may work with you and not put you into the charge-off process. Now, eventually, so you'll either fall behind completely or you'll catch up. And if you fall behind completely, the charge-off process will start. And this is what that looks like. That's six months of non-payment and the account gets charged off. So... That process is separate. And if you pull yourself out of the charge-off process or you catch up on your delinquencies, then you're current again. And when you're current again, if you fall behind again, then the date of first delinquency goes back to the post-catch-up for date of first delinquency. And the date of first delinquency is when you first are delinquent. And it doesn't have to be a non-payment, just even just a little bit of delinquency. That's the date of first delinquency. And it's important because creditors and debt collectors especially will want to push this date as far forward as possible. Um, and it's to your benefit to push it as far back as possible. So a debt collector will say that it's the charge-off date. And we'll say that it's the date that you first fell behind, even a little bit. Because the statute of limitations will be pu pushed back by at least six months. In Texas, the debt collector has four years to sue you to collect a debt. And if that date is further back, then that's to your benefit. So another thing that's related to the date of first delinquency is when you look at your credit report, you'll see um, the reporting for each account. It'll normally say current or CCCC. And then you'll see 30, 60, 90, 120 days late. That's related to the date of first delinquency. Credit reporting is all interrelated. It's like a web. You push over here and something moves over here. So um, with the date of first delinquency, it's related to the current status and the number of days late. So it's interesting to look at this because if you're current in January, you can't be 90 days late in February. The furthest you could be late in February would be 30 days. And then... 60 days in March, and then 90 days in April, and 120 days in May. So it's important to look at your credit report closely because if you're suddenly 60 days late, or if you go from 30 to 90 days late, or if there's any kind of gap between the, the dates, if there's a time travel in your credit report, then something's wrong. That's inaccurate. It's impossible for that to happen. And that's the basis for a dispute, and if it's not cleared up, potentially a lawsuit. Because the further late you're reported, 
the worse your credit score is. If you were 30 days late on something and then you caught up, that's not as bad as being 60, 90, or 120 days late. So it's important these dates are accurate. If you're dealing with issues on your credit report need, and you need help disputing them or you have questions about the dispute process, give me a call. I'm here to help you and am ready to look at your case, your credit reports, and give you some direction on which way to go, whether that involves more disputes or filing a lawsuit. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Thanks.